Hey, remember when you got an actual manual of games? Yeah, look. It had like artwork and the story so far. Now all you get is one little piece of paper. Oh, and yeah, we'll get to this in another video. Today we are looking at Spider-Man for PlayStation 1. This action-adventure game was released in 2000, featuring the voice actors from the animated series of the 90s. But the game is not thematically linked to the series. Neversoft, famous for their Tony Hawk's games at the time, developed this game. They even do a spot of in-game advertising. Spider-Man actually uses the same engine as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. The game begins with Dr. Octavius describing some new invention that he's come up with at a science convention. Peter Parker is in the crowd and doesn't he look familiar? Yeah, he looks like Danny Zuko. Then all hell breaks loose as Spider-Man's double turns up and Eddie Brock loses control and becomes Venom. Hey, listen, it's Stan Lee. Spider-Man co-creator Stan Lee here. Hey, Spider. Hey, Spider. Where the hell does Black Cat keep coming from? The cinematics look very good for PlayStation 1. They have nice animation. The next stage you enter the bank and you start beating up on the thugs. What I like about this level is that the bank is literally called The Bank. That's original. The combat style is pretty good in the game and you can use environmental pieces like the plant pot. This is interesting because you can do similar things in the new game. Damn, Spider-Man's strong. Look how big that is. It just lifts it over his head. What you've got to do here is get this bomb into the safe to stop it blowing up the building. And as we've seen, Spider-Man is super strong and can just throw that bomb across the hall. Boom. There it goes. Not this time, guys. Wouldn't throwing a bomb make it blow up? By the way, every time you boot up the game, it loads these different demo scenes. Hey, hold on a minute. That's gimmick infringement. That's James Bond. Each level starts with a comic book depicting the upcoming level, and this is a nice little feature. You'll notice on some levels that there's mist up in the skyline, and I think this was added in to make up for the graphical incapabilities, although it is a plot device used throughout the story as well. As you progress, you come up against Scorpion. He's pretty easy. You just spam the impact web, which is up and triangle. Then Jameson scoils you. Won't work. Oh, you're just too clever and look at these guys. Oh my god, look how quick they went. They got superpowers themselves. Then the NYPD go absolutely crazy shooting up buildings with a helicopter. Wow, do you think that they went a little bit too far with this part? You finally escape with them still blasting at you and they crash into a building. Hey, you gonna pay for that tower? Uh oh, spider sense tingling. One more step and it's a load of web fluid sticking you to that wall. Well, it's not the most romantic proposition I've ever had. Black Cat? Oh, I'm so glad it's you. Damn, girl, you ugly. And isn't she called Black Cat? Why is she wearing blue? You meet some other characters throughout the game from the Marvel Universe. Like, here's Johnny Storm. ...is invisible to my spider sense. Knowing your luck, Venom will find you. Have faith, Spidey. It's nice to see a little cameo from other Marvel characters, but why can't he help me in this game? Following this, you chase Venom. And then there's this little comedy part, with Venom running into, like, public toilets and looking at women. <laughs> What's that first step, Parker? It's a doozy! <laughs> Ow! My head! Oh! Toe, toe, toe! Ow! Look out, lady! Oh my goodness! <laughs> no! Sorry, lady. Didn't see a thing. Where'd Spider Wars go? Spider Wars! Come out and play! A nice Warriors reference there. This game is stealing gimmicks left and right. When you finally catch up to Venom, you take him on in a boss battle. He's relatively easy, but you've got to look out for him disappearing and reappearing behind you. You just impact web him until he dies. Then you go through this sewer segment, which takes quite a long time, and eventually you catch up to Venom again. 
you got to play a little puzzle game. And this is something that the game does well. It has a nice bit of variety going on. None of the levels are particularly similar. What the hell? Can't he f swim? What kind of a job did Uncle Ben do when he raised Peter if he didn't teach him how to swim? The useless bastard. I'm glad he's dead. Once you catch up to Venom again, you get to fight him again. But first you talk to Mary Jane. Mary Jane! Please! Hey! You made it! Venom! I'd let you see your wifey poo, but she's in the bath right now. <laughs> 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 Boobs. This is similar to the first fight, but what you've got to avoid here is Mary Jane drowning, and you've got to avoid hitting the switches accidentally. Once you've dealt with Venom, he becomes your ally briefly, and then the next segment is all to do with these like gooey figures. I think there's something to do with the symbiotes, but it's hard as hell. This elevator section took me forever to beat. I was just jumping all around trying to get through it as quick as I could. And you can use your special abilities, but they don't do anything to these enemies. You have to hit them, and some of them take like eight punches. You can use your web gloves, that does help. As you see here, my impact webs don't do anything, it just knocks them back. You can spam this jump kick, but if you do two in a row, Spider-Man sort of sits still and then he gets punched just like that. It really, really annoyed me this bit. Once you get all the way through, you get this little cinematic and you meet the imposter. This looks very, very similar. Hey, it's that really famous meme. So, of course, it's Mysterio that's been disguised as Spider-Man all along. You get to take on Mysterio makes himself huge and then he shoots lasers out of his nipples I, I know they're not nipples but this part was really hard as well took me a while to figure it out died quite a few times here basically what you got to do is stick to the back of the platform and just spam those impact webs again following that there's a section where the electricity moves around you just got to keep jumping over it and hit him with impact webs and eventually he's defeated ah the cliche CD waterfront warehouse Stan Lee just called the level design cliche. So you've got to take on these gooey figures again, but this time you get to destroy the gates that are producing them. It's a very long section and you've got to take down ever so many gates. But once you do that, you continue further down this area. You come to these laser rooms next, and boy they're a bitch. And that's fair, huh? The lasers can shoot straight through walls. God damn it! Eventually you'll make it through, and when you do, you get to the final level before the big boss battles. In the final level, what you've got to do is shut down these vents, causing the pressure to rise. You run around shooting your webs at these levers, and eventually the pressure's too much and the facility blows up. And this helps in releasing Black Cat, who's been captured. The boss battles follow, and to be honest, I thought they were a little disappointing. In against Dr. Ock, you literally just jump around and hit these switches, trying to avoid his attacks. That drains the power on his shield, and then you just spam him with the impact web. Fairly easy. What color do you bleed? Ah, what color do you bleed? That is what I remember so fondly from this game. Anyway, you take on Carnage next. And what you've got to do is trap him in this sonic field. At first it can seem quite difficult, but once you get it down you can just keep him there and he loses his health very fast. The final boss of the game is Doc Ock with the Carnage symbiote attached to him. And this is quite a disappointing end. You literally run away from him. You don't get to fight him. There he goes. Boom! That's the end of the game. You get a closing scene playing cards with some of the other characters from Marvel. But damn, look how big those cards are. And the bad guys are doing the same thing as well. Why haven't they got prison uniforms on though? So overall, the game holds up pretty well still. If you can readjust to those old frustrations of not being able to control the camera and the not so fluid movement, you'll still enjoy this game. It reminded me how difficult games used to be. I played on medium and got stuck on the elevator level for 40 minutes. I also struggled with the Mysterio boss fight, but most of the other bosses were very easy and as I said a little bit disappointing. The graphics of most PS1 games have aged badly, but I actually think this looks okay, especially when the characters are in costume. 
When they're in their civvies though, it doesn't look so great. The cutscenes hold up really well, nice animation, and the music throughout is really good. With, like high energy beats, keeps you wanting to strive through the levels. Also listen to the rocking theme tune. There are additional features to give the game a little added playtime. Collecting all the comics throughout and beating the game in certain ways will unlock new costumes, some of which have special abilities, such as Infinite Web. The training mode is a cool little feature with time attack, survival mode, speed training, target practice and item collection. This can be fun to play just to challenge yourself or sometimes go against a friend. All in all, this is a great Spider-Man game and you should definitely check it out, especially if you want a little bit of a challenge from your game. It's a thumbs up from me. It held up back then and it still holds up now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.